Hi, thanks very much for clicking on the video link. My name is Natalie Armstrong Moton with Marketing Resolution, and this is another in the series of idle chat videos for the American Bar Association's Section for Dispute Resolution. Today, I'm talking to a colleague in La Jolla, California. This is Chuck. Chuck, this is everyone. Well, good morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for uh, putting on your best bow tie and joining me for an idle chat. Well, I'm delighted to do so. All Happy right. Well, I'm glad to have you. So Chuck, we're gonna shuffle the cards and have a little conversation. I know for you, today's a rainy, blustery day. So we'll get, we'll get some fun, lighthearted topics to counteract the, the rainy, windy day in, in San Diego. All right, first card reads, what is your favorite way to get some exercise? I, for many years, was a, um, an over-the-road bicyclist. And uh, I, I did a lot of cross-country biking uh, and enjoyed it immensely. But I had three kids, two boys, and my older boy um, borrowed my bicycle and uh, it got stolen. Uh, he borrowed my wife's bicycle and it got stolen. And uh, so for want of a bicycle, I started running. Uh, and that was in about 1982 or so. And I've been running ever since. I, I do confess that uh, each year I seem to run a little slower. And I'm, I'm not sure now that I'm really running or just fast walking. But um, I try to run three days a week. And uh, it makes me feel at least I've, like I've accomplished something. And, uh, hope at least gets my heart rate going a little bit longer. That's a good, that's a really good exercise. Yeah. And we can all run regardless of the speed. That's, you know, well, that's what we can... I convinced myself. Yes. But it's, you know, when, when you see the, the young Turks come bolting by you, uh, it's a humbling experience and humility isn't a bad thing either. Maybe they're just not taking the time to appreciate the good view that you are. Ah, uh, I, you know, I, I'm going to think about that tomorrow morning when I go out. Yeah, they're just, they're rushing by. They're not, they're not embracing the moment the same way you are. You've added some insight to my, my exercise experience. Just, you know, you, you, you got to make it work. You got to make it work. All right, Chuck, what is the spiciest thing you've ever eaten? <sighs> Thai food. I can't remember exactly what the dish was. Uh, but I happen to like spicy food. Uh, I went to college uh, at the University of Iowa, and one of my fraternity brothers was from Panama. And when we would go out for pizza, he would always just basically coat the top of the pizza with red chili pepper flakes. And I learned from him that there is, uh, there's a delight to be had uh, to the palate. But uh, this particular dish I had was one that really um i think was over the top i generally like uh food uh, that's different and off the beaten track and so i i'm, I'm daring and will uh, will generally you know embrace something that's odd on the menu even if i don't know what it is but this was particularly hot and uh in fact as i'm telling you this story i can still kind of taste it a little bit in the roof of my mouth <laughs> And now there's a difference between spicy and something that causes you physical distress. <laughs> well, this just lingered with me. I, I did survive the experience. Still, yeah, no, I, and Thai food almost always is at the top of the spicy list. Yeah. All right, sir, next question. Who would you nominate to have their own reality TV show? Boy, that's a that's an interesting challenge. Not having thought about this in advance, I think it would probably be a a musician, uh, and it might be uh, uh, somebody who's not you know in the popular genre, but somebody maybe like Yo Yo Ma. Um, his name just happens to pop into my mind right now. Could be somebody else along that same category, but 
uh, having them show us a little bit about the reality of their lives when all we hear is pure perfection uh, at, at the concert level might be kind of interesting and worthwhile. I think you're right. I think that would be an excellent TV reality show. Yeah, behind the scenes, what it really takes. Ask me the question tomorrow. I might come up with a different answer. But... <laughs> I'll, I'll just call you back tomorrow morning. Same bat time, same bat channel. All right. <laughs> All right. Next card. Chuck, what is the worst thing you've ever eaten out of politeness? I spent a year in Vietnam and my job was as an advisor uh, to the Vietnamese JAG Corps. I was stationed in Saigon and one of the responsibilities was to do a lot of protocol compliance and um, our counterparts had a big celebratory luncheon that was a command performance. I didn't have any choice but to go and I didn't have any choice but to eat. And the entire meal was made from a goat. Uh, what was served as sort of a, an aperitif uh, and looked a little bit like a Bloody Mary was goat's blood. And the, I will tell you that the soup was goat testicle soup. Uh, fortunately, the menu was in Vietnamese, which I did not read. So I didn't, I didn't know what I was eating until my counterpart after lunch translated it for me. I think they took great delight in trying to see whether they could get the Americans to squirm. And frankly, I didn't squirm, but it uh, wasn't something that I ordered the next time I was in a Vietnamese restaurant. Good for you. I, yeah. And I think that a lot of cultures enjoy the sport of, you know, feeding things that are, are not a, a normal menu item, but good for you, not flinching. That was over the top, I have to say. Yeah. I, <laughs> and I, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I will agree. Um, let's see. Next card. Is there a song that you feel absolutely compelled to sing along to, even if you don't know all, all of the words? You know, I'm sure there are many songs. I, I played in a, a rock and roll cover band all the way through uh, college. Um, I was the drummer. And although I had at that time, done a lot of singing and I've done a lot of singing ever since. The other guys in my band never let me sing. Uh, I could occasionally do some ooh ahs in the background or something like that. But I, I sat for uh, four years basically at my drum kit listening to them sing. Uh, and so I've got the, 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 uh, the chord structure and the music down pat, uh, but they never let me memorize the words, or at least I didn't memorize the words. And out of that, uh, the, the tune that comes quickest to mind is Johnny Be Good. And I, um, I always wanted to sing that song and, and uh, it's obviously left a scar in my brain someplace. Well, maybe when I call you back tomorrow, you can sing it to me. I'll spend the afternoon working on that one. There you go. There you go. All right. Uh, Chuck, when was the last time you slept more than nine hours? Saturday night when uh, daylight savings time expired. I, um, I'm not slothful, but one of the things that I have enjoyed since retiring from big law and leaving the timesheet behind uh, is that I get up when I get up. I don't, other than an occasional trip when I have to get to the airport early, I don't use an alarm clock. And um, last Saturday night, Sunday morning was one of those times I just slept till, till the spirit moved me. And it turned out it was, uh, it was slightly more than 10 hours. Such a nice luxury, isn't it? Uh, 
I'm, I'm in hog heaven. Right. Absolutely. And Chuck, I'll ask you the same question I ask all of my guests as the last question. And that is to tell me a little bit about your practice and what you love most about the work we do in the resolution industry. I don't think there is as much difference between being an advocate in the dispute resolution context and being a neutral. The, as I reflect back on the maybe the last 10 plus years of my active practice of law, I spent an awful lot of time trying to be creative and imagining solutions to the problems that people brought to me for some sort of resolution, uh, knowing that most of them certainly didn't want to go to court and that one of the, the services I could provide to people was to be imaginative and to en encourage them to think creatively about what were they really trying to accomplish. Now, that's just the flip side of what I do as a mediator and even frankly as an arbitrator and I, I do a lot of uh, arbitration and business disputes primarily uh, but those people are they too are looking for a solution and oftentimes by providing them a sense of uh, of fairness and giving them an opportunity to be heard uh, puts the case in a position where they then can set about to resolve the case either themselves or with the assistance of another mediator. But the thing I like most about mediation particularly is if I can, I can do something, I can think of something that the parties and their lawyers have not been able to think about themselves and then and then try to assist them in embracing it as a as a way to to be at peace. Uh, as I said, I I had a very active practice as a trial lawyer for fifty plus years, and I and I really enjoyed it, and I I loved being in the courtroom as an advocate. But when it was all said and done, even when you were victorious and your client prevailed, there was so little satisfaction and peace that was purchased in the courtroom. And if I can help somebody be at peace, it, it's a very fulfilling experience. I think the day is well spent. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Could not agree more. Well, Chuck, it was so nice uh, of you to set aside some of your, your valuable uh, drum time, sing time, run time, uh, and have an idle chat with me. I really appreciate it. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me. This has been fun. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was nice getting to know you a little bit. Delight. Delight on my end, too. Thank Thanks you. very much. <laughs>